Welcome back and welcome to another Blood Angels painting video. In this one we're going to look at the Sanguinar and it's going to be kind of an indirect review of the Heavy Metal Masterclass because I used uh, their article from White Dwarf uh, 363 uh, from April and it's been reprinted in their new Heavy Metal uh, Masterclass painting guide. So um, I really like those Masterclass articles. Uh, in this one I actually use Reaper Paints um, I just translated over what the GW ones were, but uh, I followed all their techniques and steps, and um, I've done that for a number of models now. And uh, if I didn't have all the white dwarfs, then that uh, masterclass book would be well worth the money for me. Um, but uh, that's your choice, and uh, you know, if you uh, if you're just looking to paint up armies, then it might not be worth it. But if you're looking to uh, get some hints on techniques and stuff, I I really enjoyed those articles in the White Dwarf, and uh, I think it's um, a nice compilation. Okay, so here's the, the paints I use. Like I said, I use Reaper paints. So uh, the non-metallic metal, um, I think the, the key colors here, uh, I would say, would be this Palomino gold. I think that's the, the key one um, to get that nice uh, gold highlight. The oiled leather, um, it's kind of just a, a mid-brown. And the ruddy leather, it's not totally necessary. It's kind of like a scorched brown. Buckskin pale, again, not too important, but I think... Uh, this this color here is the key. Um, if you're using GW paints and following their tutorial, you're going to be mixing some of their paints, uh, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, for the sword on the Sanguinar, I used this uh, marine teal triad, as well as a bit of um, oh, you know what? I didn't show it. Uh, just a bit of a off white. It's the uh, snowy gray, I believe it is. Um, which is a, just a bluish gray. So anyways, you can mix the surf off going pure white. Uh, for the scrolls, I use this stained ivory, yellowed bone, creamy ivory triad with a bit of leather white as a edge highlight. For the um, wings, I use this stormy gray, cloudy gray, misty gray triad. Uh, for the non-metallic silver bits, I use just uh, gray, white, and black, um, as well as some of the bad ab black. And uh, I should mention too, for the um, for the non-metallic uh, gold, I use Devil in Mud and Bad Ab Black, um, and I use pure white sort of in the top here. Okay, for the uh, let's see what is it? For the gemstones, I use this uh, violet red triad. Um, actually, no, sorry, wrong one. I used this one here for the gemstones. I used this for the purity seals, and any of the red bits it was just uh, a deep red and blood red. So um, not a ton of different colors on this. Uh, the majority of the work was in here. So I started out with an oiled leather base coat and uh, worked my way up a little bit and then worked back into some of the, the shading. Used Devlin Mud, Bata Black for shading and then highlighted with Buckskin Pale and some uh, glint with uh, pure white. Okay, so I started out with a dark brown spray and obviously I assembled this guy. It made it a little bit tricky to get in behind some of this stuff here, but um, overall I didn't think that that was too big a deal. So, um, you, yeah, if you pick up the model and look at weird angles, you'll see that I didn't paint in there, but, um, well, I'm expecting people won't be doing that too much. So that's what it looks like overall. And uh, here's this oiled leather. So that's kind of like a snake bite leather base coat. So uh, oiled leather on all of the gold bits. So I did that in a couple of thin layers just to get it on smoothly and completely. And uh, so all of the armored bits got that. Okay, now what you can't quite see here is this is a thin, um, starting to do the thin down uh, Palomino gold for some highlights and uh, trying to just build up these layers really gradually. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit here. Um, anyways, you're basically putting on layers uh, super, super thin so you can barely see them. And what it means is that the edges between the layers will blend really nicely. And so here I am kind of working my way up to a pure Palomino gold. And you can see it sort of on certain edges. And like I said, I followed the article kind of using their guide. I've just copied basically what they did in terms of where the highlights were and where they wouldn't be. Um, in my experience with non-metallic metal, uh, doing a couple models, you know, where you copy somebody else's as close as you can, uh, is really helpful, and then it gives you an idea of sort of the rules for how these things will will glint off of things. So, 
um, just working up my palomino gold here on certain areas and um, I would say that non-metallic is about making rules and sticking with them in terms of how the reflections are going to work uh, up and down and left and right and once you kind of figure that out for yourself by doing a couple models it goes a lot faster so here I am working up as you can see you start seeing the highlights coming out and on the back as well and you can see from this this is the palomino gold uh, paint pot uh, well, draw eyedropper that it's pretty close there so I'm pretty much a pure palomino gold at the edge areas and the blending isn't perfect um, I'll be able to go back with a bit of the oiled leather and with the darker colors uh, and in fact it looks like I'm starting to add darker colors in now so this is probably the ruddy leather and uh, so you're painting into the shadows of things and yeah I, I can see there so that's kind of focusing on the, in the middle bits there trying to blend it uh, as best I can okay now I'm starting to get uh, deep dark browns in there so kind of going from a, a sh sharp contrast there and then blending upwards same sorts of things here so we have a uh, going to end up with kind of with non-metallic you end up with like a sharp contrast and then a gradient uh, in many uh, many of the surfaces so uh, working into the shadows and uh, now what I'm doing is adding some of the devil and mud so I'm using devil and mud basically like a glaze with a really fine brush and I'm just painting it on in super thin layers because uh, if you don't let the inks pool or sorry not inks the washes pool they'll go on just like glazes and so I'm just painting those on uh, helping things blend a bit okay so now we got uh, bad at black and so again just painting in the, these creases here painting up against that edge and uh, using them just like glazes so kind of focusing one or two strokes on the area that needs to be darkest and then less strokes as I go further out so uh, you, you just kind of do it by feel you do one or two strokes in each area you move on to another area and you just kind of do that and by the time you get back to the original one that should be dry and with a fine brush you're just kind of painting on each individual layer does almost nothing um, but uh, over time it'll build up and you'll get a really nice gradient and I'm using a fine brush there so I think it's a 5-0 uh, Lowell Corning brush um, and just kind of going through things okay so now I decided to base coat these wings and other stuff because I was getting close to being done with the hard bits there and I wanted to um, paint some of the other base coats uh, so that I didn't accidentally paint over all of my hard work and um, so here I am adding these th that cold stone gray uh, gradients to the wings and uh, base coating some of the other areas so again, I'm just uh, doing some layering sort of feathering here um, I thinned down the stuff with the Reaper uh, flow improver which is like the heavy metal um, matte uh, what, is it, what they call matte medium um, and uh, so it's kind of just going on nice thin layers and uh, nice it, as it dries it gives a nice gradient so it's all about having just the right amount of paint on the brush and um, it's about a one-to-one -one mix of flow improver to paint uh, there I have added the red and uh, okay so now I'm highlighting these white bits so that's just the um, just one of the gray triads nothing too special there um, the darkest one gets everything the middle one gets sort of everything but the cracks and the brightest one just gets the edges and there's actually no white in those uh, those areas it's all just grays okay and so all of the wings uh, they got that sort of color treatment and uh, what am I doing here so now I've, I've started adding some black washes to the non-metallic um, silver stuff so that's these three main areas here oh, and there's a bit here and his necklace kind of is as well and uh, so I'm just trying to add some shades and I'm just using bad Ab black for that uh, then I've moved over to the sword and so I'm using those uh, Reaper aqua colors and so I painted it the darkest color in one go and now this is the the next uh, mid-tone highlight and so it's kinda I've basically blocked off this section this section this section here and there so I'm kind of you can see it's alternating 
Um, that's how I do my sort of uh, power weapon look. And there's also a flat surface in the center here, uh, just outside of that groove. And so I'm kind of alternating that as well. So let's see, here's the next one. And uh, so, like I said, I'm kind of blending the edge, but it's basically one color like that, and it's going to go sort of in, in gradients there. And so this is one section, and you can see there's that edge there, and I've just alternated it as well. So it matches with the opposite sides. And uh, it's just trying to get that straight edge there is all about using the edge of the brush, having just the right amount of paint, and using the surfaces to help you. Um, and one of the tricks with getting this blending just right, um, I, I happen to lick the paintbrush to, to get the right, just the right amount of uh, pigment and moisture on it. Uh, but the other thing too is if you don't really like how, if it's, it ends up being a bit too harsh there, you just go back with a dark color and you just kind of blend it in a little bit. And I find that going backwards with colors works, uh, works wonders in terms of blending. If you don't get it just right the one way, then you go back the other way and you blend it downwards. Uh, and now what I've done here is I've used just the edge of the brush and this tiniest amount of paint with the, the lightest color and just did the, that those edges there just to try to define those. And again, it's just about having that just the right amount of paint um, with the right amount of moisture and running the brush along that edge. I'm not actually using the tip of the brush, I'm kind of using um, just off to the side of it a bit. And uh, I would say that's done. I think I used a little bit of pure white just in the center there, um, trying to blend it as much as possible, but there's hardly any um, pure white, if, if any at all. Uh, now I'm using the, um, the stained ivory triad to uh, highlight these scrolls and uh, using, trying to get a bit of a jagged edge there to, to show a bit of wear. So I'm just using the edge, the tip of the brush, it's an older brush there. Um, just to help uh, make it look a little bit more worn and, and uh, scroll-like. Um, and then the stuff that I didn't show, because there's not really much to show in between, is um, I added little white flecks there, and again, following kind of the guide in the book, and that gives you kind of your glint on all of it. So there's some on the lower edge, some on the higher edge, and that's again about learning sort of the rules of it and uh, following through. As well, what I didn't really show there was these um, gemstones. So that's just painting the, the darkest color, painting a kind of a loop along the bottom in the medium, and then just painting the lower edge in the lighter one and putting a white uh, dot on the top. This stuff here, uh, just using the grays and trying to blend them um, and going up to whites just for the edges there. And again, following sort of the guideline that was in that tutorial and uh, following the rules of non-metallic. So let's uh, walk around this model and see if there's any other areas I forgot to mention. So I find that um, with a non-metallic look, uh, it looks great up until you're almost done. And then when you add that white, if you do it just right, um, it just pushes the model over the edge in terms of uh, uh, realism, you know, in a sort of a artistic sense. Um, and I did those scrolls. I just used a my finest brush I had with a little bit of a scorched brown um, moistened down on it, and I'm just doing squiggles. Those don't actually say anything. And then I added a couple little uh, icons there based on what they did, just to kind of copy it. And I thought that added some nice detail. And uh, that's about it. Um, really enjoyed painting this model. Um, I think I've. I've uh, improved my non-metallic look a lot. I wouldn't say that I've perfected it, but um, I think I've been able to do a convincing job on this guy, and uh, that's uh, big thanks to the article um, that's going to be featured in the new Heavy Metal book. And, uh, you know, whether or not you want to get that, I, I think it depends on how much you like to focus on painting and whether or not you have the old white dwarfs, but uh, um, definitely high-quality uh, article that really helps you um, helps you figure out some of the tricky stuff with non-metallics. And uh, once I was all done, I sprayed this guy with a, um, a coat of uh, dull coat from uh, Testers, just to uh, give it a bit of protection. And um, can't wait to see this guy on the tabletop. I think Dave's probably going to get to use him before I do. Uh, he's been using my Mephiston with lots of uh, success. 
and uh, this guy here is going to have to get a tryout. He's not an independent character, so um, that'll be interesting to see, but anybody within six inches on his side gets plus one attack in close combat. So uh, I think he's going to be pretty deadly. He also has a three plus invuln save and three wounds. So uh, I think he's going to be a bit of a beast. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, leave a comment below. Check out my blog. Um, and uh, there's uh, comments that you can put on there and you can request uh, other videos. I've got lots of stuff sort of in the works and trying to prioritize. But if, uh, if I get lots of feedback about some things, um, then I can answer specific questions or do specific tutorials as requested. Hope you enjoyed it and check my channel for more stuff. See you next time.